Please welcome Space Camp Hall of Fame inductee, Dr. Serena Onan Chancellor. Inducting Serena are Hall of Fame members Dottie Metcalf Lindenberger, Liz Warren, Andrea Hansen, and Michelle Lucas. Thank you so much. It's, it's quite an honor to be here. I um, want to thank Dr. Barnhart, first of all, for having me and the U.S. Space and Rocket Center for inducting me in. It is a huge honor. Um, it's even better when your friends are there to do it for you. So Michelle, Liz, and Andrea, um, these are ladies I've been friends with for a long time. So that means a lot to me. Thank you so much. And to Dottie as well. I remember going to space camp vividly. And some folks say that some of your strongest emotions uh, evoke the strongest memories. And the things that I remember from my space camp week, Space Academy really, I remember landing on the plane. I remember arriving at Huntsville Airport. I remember sitting at the medical officer position during our simulations. Now I didn't realize that until years later when I looked back and thought, huh, that's ironic. I remember the friends that I met, and I remember flying home and having that feeling that I couldn't shake. And Dr. Barnhart called it the thump, and that's probably the best way to phrase it. There's something you feel inside. It's like a small flame has been lit, and it doesn't go out. So it was really an honor with General Bolden today to be able to have a little bit of time to speak with some of those space camp and Space Academy graduates, because you see that thump start to form in them, and you realize that a flame has been lit. And your hope is that they carry that flame with them as they continue their education, and they get bogged down again in the mundane schoolwork and everything else as they leave their, their time here. Because I know I carried that with me, and back then, when I applied for medical school and they said, what are your long-term plans? I said, I want to work for NASA. And they didn't know what to do with that. Because doctors working for NASA, were, there weren't very many of them, and, and they didn't know what to do with them, so they just kind of waved me off to the side and said, okay, okay, whatever. But I held on to that dream, and that small flame was always there. It was always lit. It was always burning. And that propelled me to to come to Johnson Space Center and do a clerkship. And the rest is history. So thank you again for letting me talk with those graduates because when Charlie and I looked up into their eyes, and I know he'd tell you the same thing, you see it in their eyes. You see that passion. And you know our future's safe. So right now I'm training for my expedition scheduled for November of next year. And, and people say, what is your life like right now? And, and a lot of my life is spent away from the U.S., so I just spent five weeks out in Russia training on the Russian Soyuz and training on Russian systems. So that time is away from family, and it's, uh, it takes a lot of work, and any of you in the military know, you know you're trying to prep your family before every trip and make sure the, the home front is stocked and ready to go. And I will have several more trips like that. The neat part about it is, and I was talking with several folks today, is that I hope that during my mission, we will see a test flight of a commercial vehicle. We will get folks on that vehicle and they will dock to station successfully for the first time. Folks forget, I know not people in this room, but other people out there forget we have an operating station and it is a big international partnership for a very long time and we've done very well with that. Station is like a busy parking lot. So one time I came in to do a Capcom shift, <clears throat> and anytime we have a commercial vehicle that is docked to station, we have a little stuffed animal that represents that commercial vehicle sitting on console. 
And I remember coming in and there was a big stuffed dragon and there was a stuffed swan and I could barely see the console because of all the animals. And when I looked at Station, we had Cygnus, we had Dragon, we had Progress, we had Soyuz, and we had HTV. So that should make people hopeful. Look at the international partnership and collaboration. Just a week ago, I taught a European astronaut how to make a s'more. <laughs> because we were standing there having a good old-fashioned weenie roast over a fire, and someone pulled out marshmallows, chocolate, and graham crackers. And, and Alex Gerst, he, he won't mind. He's going to be commanding station this, this next year. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, Alex, I'm making a s'more. And he said, I don't know what that is. And so we taught him how, and he thought it was the best thing ever. But we have strong partnerships with all, all of our international partners. And what General Bolden said earlier was true. We need to maintain those strong partnerships because that is the only way we will press ahead and get our boots on Mars. So I am very hopeful, only because I think in the next three to four years, things are going to ramp up so dramatically and it's going to be tremendously exciting. What really gets me excited, though, is thinking about when we launch from American soil again. The best part about that is we still had 18,000 people apply for the astronaut corps. And you have over 900 kids coming next week to light that flame at space camp. So they are ready for the future. They are ready. They know what's coming and what's out there. And they are probably chomping at the bit to be a part of that. And that gives me hope. I know it gives you hope out there. Because I can't wait to see what the future brings. But thank you so much. It is quite an honor to be inducted in. It's an honor to be with my fellow inductees tonight. And I hope you honor them as much as well. Um, so thank you very much for having me here. <laughs>